stress-free engine maintenance. How to flush the raw water system on a small diesel engine. Well, on this demonstration, um, we're going to show you how to flush a seawater system um, out of a small yacht engine. Now, this is a Yanmar 2GM20 engine, and what we're going to do, we're simply going to um, pour fresh water through the seawater side of the system, and what that will do is clean out the heat exchanger and the exhaust system, um, ready for uh, winterizing, or even if you just want to flush the seawater out, um, now and again and just keep the system nice and clean so salt doesn't build up through it. The first thing we need to do um, to actually be able to flush this system is actually we're going to turn off the seacock for the water coming in. Now the seacock on this engine is actually on the side of the sail drive. So this has a sail drive in it, it's an SD20 and the water inlet is either side of the sail drive unit. So the water comes up through the sail drive and then to the strainer, but via a tap on the side of the sail drive. So I've just turned, I'll just turn that off. And now that's off, we're going to remove the lid of the water strainer. And then we're going to just remove the O-ring, just in case we dislodge it by accident, because that will... If we dislodge that and don't notice and it falls down there, when we put the lid back on, it'll no longer seal. So I'm just going to put that to one side to remind me to make sure it goes back in the right place. And then I'm simply going to get some water and fill up the strainer. And now that's full, what we can do is we're going to start the engine and the impeller will take the water from here and as it takes it, um, I'm going to continue to top it up using the um, using the watering can um, until such time that we run out of water. Um, and that's plenty of water then, because we've got about five litres of water, and that's plenty enough water which will come down through into the impeller, up through the heat exchanger, out the other side of the heat exchanger, and then down into the exhaust elbow, down into the exhaust, and it will push all the seawater out through the exhaust outlet. Um, so I'm going to start the engine now. Okay, so the water is now disappearing. I'm simply going to keep it topped up. about half full at the moment so I'm just keeping the level about half full and we can see five litres of water doesn't last very long so you can actually get an appreciation of how much water the engine uses and you can hear it empty now we simply stop it using the stop cable lever which is fitted to the side of the pump and then we'll turn the engine off and we've now flushed all the seawater out of the system. Um, now if we wanted to and we wanted to winterise the engine we'd do exactly the same thing but we'd use a coolant um, in the system and um, so it's an antifreeze and water mix and we'd fill this up with the same mix and we'd do exactly the same thing um, but with a coolant and then that will then leave um, an antifreeze solution in the raw water system so over the winter period the fresh water we've just flushed and flushed into the exhaust won't freeze and it will help protect the um, intercooler from any corrosion or lime scale build up over the winter period. Now's the time with the raw water seacock closed to fill up the strainer with water, or you can do this just prior to starting the engine. Imagine for the moment that the strainer is full of water. Um, so once we've done that, um, we need to um, just pop the lid back on, um, pop the seal in place. The seal is very important um, because this stops air from sucking into the system while the engine is running. 
Remember this is above the water line, so as we put the lid on, if this doesn't seal entirely, um, then um, water won't leak out because we're above the water line, but what will happen is air will leak in and air will suck in and it will go down and starve the impeller of water. Now that's really important because the impeller is made of rubber in a brass housing. It will get very hot very quickly and the rubber will start to deteriorate very quickly. And that will also then create your engine to overheat because we've got no seawater going through the heat exchanger and the engine will overheat. Not only that, is part of your exhaust system is also made of rubber and plastic and we can damage that as well. So it's very, very important that we never starve the impeller of water. Um, so just to make 100% sure that we get the lid on correctly, um, it's very easy because it's quite a large thread to cross thread it. So what I would advise people to do is, rather than just chuck it on and just go, right, let's do it up, because you can easily cross thread it, is I normally advise people to just to go backwards, so anti-clockwise, until the lid drops into the threads. And you'll hear it drop in when it does it, like that. And then you're in the threads and we know then that we can do it up all the way and you should get a good couple of turns out of it before it then starts to clamp onto the rubber o-ring. And you just see a little darkening of the top here where the o-ring is sealing. And we just need to do it hand tight. We don't want to over tighten it because we'll run the risk of damaging it. Um, so now this is full of water, the seacock still shut. So now is the time to open the seacock because that will then keep the water in here because there's no air to drain it out in the top. So we open the seacock and start the engine and then we'll see within here the water starting to churn hopefully and, um, and then it'll start to pump through. The other thing I was always advise when you first start it um, is start the engine and then raise the engine speed just a little. Now the engines normally run about 600 revs and sometimes the small impeller can struggle to draw the water through, especially if there is still some air in the system somewhere. Um, but filling this up gets rid of most of that. Um, but if you raise the engine speed even to a thousand revs, the impeller is turning nearly twice as quick. So, and it will pump the water a lot more efficiently. Um, so you don't have to raise it high because don't forget the engine's cold, just ever so slightly more than tick over, so about a thousand revs. Um, and then it'll work a lot better and you'll see the water starting to churn. Um, our demonstration here though, we are out of the water. So the boat is actually out of the water at the moment. And um, so we've shown you how to flush the system and that's in the way we would do it if we were winterizing. So like I said before, we, we would flush it with antifreeze and then leave it for the winter. Um, so what we do now um, is actually we leave the system as it is until it goes into the water. And then once it's in the water, then we'll do what we said about filling this up and then opening the seacock and then running the system. Now Jonathan is going to show us how to flush the raw water system on a small diesel engine where we get the pump to do the work for us. Okay, so this is a Volvo MD 2020 and what I'm going to quickly do is just show you how to flush the raw water system of this engine. Now if this was fitted in the yacht you'd have access to the front of the impeller housing um, which is here. Um, you'll have a pipe fitting to the bottom and what you can do is one of two things now, you can either remove the pipe from the bottom of the impeller and replace it with another pipe like I've done here and this pipe will then go down into a bucket of fresh water and you just place it just in front of the engine. Um, um, alternatively you can use the pipe that's already fitted but you undo the other end and from whatever it's fitted, if it's the um, water strainer or from the seacock, obviously we need to have turned the seacock off first. Um, and then we can put that into a bucket of water as well. Um, and then simply all we do is we just start the engine up and you may find you might need to rev the engine slightly, so have it prepared if you need to. Um, otherwise you will see, because we've got a clear pipe, hopefully the water coming up. Rip the engine. The pellet should feel cool to touch. It does. If I rip the engine. The water's coming out. You see, it's much more effective if we raise the engine speed. Raise the engine speed. And then what you can simply 
do as well um, is just top up this with coolant and then we can flush coolant through afterwards once we're satisfied that the steam water's out we can then flush the coolant and you can see the very good Simple as that.